peace, fam. Brother Hiram Akeem here, man. Mecca Media Entertainment. Hey, man, I'm here with another Black Thought. Actually, I'm here with a little uh, a little cipher right here, man. I'm going to call it the divine helper. Divine meaning God appointed helper, right? You know, because a lot of people always get confused on what is the woman's role and who is the woman in the grand scheme of a relationship or even in the grand scheme of, of the most highest plan. So I did a little a little studying, man, and I wrote it down. So I'm going to be referring to my notes if it's all right with you. All right, check it out. It says, the woman is the divine helper for man. Okay. Uh, Genesis 2.18, God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make a helper fit for him. A helper fit for him, okay? Excuse me. Now, what does that mean? I'm going to make a helper fit for him. No, I'm going to continue to read before I break it down. It also says, um, as Paul put it, uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 9, neither was the man created for woman, but the woman was created for man, okay? Now, um, I'm going to mix all of that up, and I wrote it down because I didn't want to forget. So, these, this is in my words, right? But I'm going to um, show you what I wrote. When we look at the word helper, we shouldn't look at it as an as, um, inferior word. We should see it in the opposite kind of way. Because if it's the man's responsibility to do a thing, so it's with the helper that he gets the thing done. So when the helper helps out, it only displays the helper's strength. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if the man is supposed to do a thing and it's his job to get the thing done, it's the helper, if he gets it done with the helper's help, it displays how strong, how much strength the helper actually brings to the table and how much she actually has. So that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing, man, because at the end of the day, the man's job was done. It also says um, the word helper is often used in the Torah or the Old Testament. Someone who is greater, more powerful than the one who's actually being helped. I'm going to say that again. In the Old Testament, or, the, or, or the, um, the Torah, which is just another word, excuse me, you guys, another word for the Old Testament, it states that, I'm going to read it as it says, the word is often used um, as someone who is greater or more powerful than the one who's being helped. That's deep. That, that's deep. In fact, the word helper is used in the Old Testament of God himself who helps his people. So I'm, I'm going to juxtapose that, man. That means if you're the helper and if God created you, woman, to be the helper in the household, in the life, in the garden, in the whole grand scheme of things, he's likening himself unto you. He's likening himself unto you because he just said it at, at the end of the day. God, who looks at himself as the divine helper, who helps his people out, he always intervenes, man. We can go all the way up through the Bible, all through all the stories in the Bible, uh, or at least a whole bunch of them, to where he intervenes and he helps out. Um, but the devil going to Eve first, or by the devil going to Eve first, is proof that the devil was trying to undermine the pattern of male leadership that God had established in the marriage. See? The devil coming to Eve first is the devil's way of undermining the male leadership in the household. But I think it's even deeper than that. He knows with the woman's help that he can get his job done. So Satan, Shaitan, the serpent, whoever, how you want to look at it, intervened or broke into the, uh, the union between Adam and Eve by going through the helper, the divine helper, God appointed helper. But it wasn't. The devil's helper, it was Adam's helper, or Adam's helper, however you want to say it, right? It says, remember, God had a relationship with Adam, and it was Adam who was to be the positive reminder of God to Eve, making him the leader of the family, the union, or the even the mission, which is what he was supposed to have been doing in the Garden of Eden in the first place. Right. As it is written in Timothy 214, God came to Adam first. This is after they had taken from the tree of knowledge um, by going to Adam first. This is a sign of respect on God's part. You know what I'm saying? God didn't come straight to the uh, to the to Eve, knowing for a fact that she the one partook or partaken in the forbidden fruit. He came straight to the leader of, of the grand of the grand leader, if you will, let me stop. I'm about to use words I shouldn't use. Well, he came to Adam, who he put 
in the garden first with instructions and directions on what was supposed to happen. You're supposed to govern, if you will, your square. Govern your universe, okay? So God says, um, I'm going to step to Adam first because it's the relationship that I have with Adam that's in question, right? So, um... I'm a, let me let me look at this. It says um, respect in the fact that the relationship that God and Adam had have just been altered. Even though it was Eve that took the first um, bite from the tree of knowledge, I think it was Adam's responsibility to hold things down, basically to let Eve know what time it really what time it really was. But I'm gonna get back to the grand scheme of the um or the grand thesis. Of the topics is called God's helper. See, if you out of order in the in the grand scheme of things, and you're not being the helper, and you want to be the lead, it's okay to be the helper because God says that's Him. Because God is the helper; He likens the helper unto Himself. It's a different responsibility to be the leader or to be the lead, right? But when you out of order and you're not on your square and you're thinking like um, following someone or not even the word following because we put a negative vibe to the word follow. But um, being behind someone and rallying someone or as I often like it put, being the infrastructure to someone's um, stance or to be in the backbone to the black family. Okay, that's who you're supposed to be. When you're in their right mind and when you're in your right place, it's okay to be somebody's backup if anybody act up. You know what? Somebody's support. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, that's who we need in our family. We need that woman who knows who she is and strong in her stance on who she is, man. So uh, I was just doing some studying, man, and I thought that was interesting, man, because we vilify the helper. Or the, or the helper themselves, they vilify the title as helper because they want to be the leader. And true indeed, our people, especially our women, has been leading for the longest. But it don't mean it's been right. So, yeah, they lead their households. They do everything. And, um, they hell, I see them all the time at the football games by themselves with no man leading the cheering section. Okay? So, I understand how they don't want to be considered um, someone's helper. But listen, I didn't write these words. The words was written in your Bible, and I like to look at it as basic instructions before leaving earth, man. Listen, man, this is Brother Hiram King, man, Black Thought Live. Listen, uh, at the end of the day, have some fun and get something done, but most importantly, feel me before they kill me, y'all.